Okay. okay. Can you read it, Lydia? Okay. I love a dog. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Johan and Joseph and Esther are away today, so just out of isolation. So me, Hannah and Lydia are here, so we're making the most of some well, two on two time instead of one on one. We're going to have a little tea party. It's always nice to make the most of whatever time you have more one on one. I think you're done. No, no. You drink it. Are you not going to pick it? No. No. This is what a tea party with Lydia looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Dad? Is it yummy? Yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> is rather tablecloths, just an old sheet. <laughs> yummy? You need a cloth. Hello, so today is Thursday and on Monday, which was the, our 10th day of isolation, Lydia tested positive. I noticed she seemed a bit extra tired. Other than that, you wouldn't know that she has it really. So we kind of have to isolate until next Monday. Well, we don't all have to, but somebody okay. can stay home with Lydia. Hello. Say hello. Are you sick? No. Not really, eh? You've been at home for a very long time. You've only been anywhere. Do you mind? Go outside. Go outside to see Ella. Okay. Okay. Um, some of the kids have been selling quince jelly that Johan made at the Little Haven, so they go outside the Little Haven and sell it. So they've been earning some money their way. Right now, Joseph is at home with me. The other two are with Johan at Little Haven. Joseph is helping me make some banana brand muffins. Is it going alright, Joe? Yeah. Joseph is making some pizza roll-ups or whatever you call them. I'm making some cinnamon ones. Hi, right, so today is Friday. Usually I'd be at the Little Haven helping Johan, but um, Lydia has COVID at the moment, so that means that I need to stay at home with her and Johan is still there. And he's taking the girls, and the girls are selling quince jelly outside, and Joseph has gone to a friend's house. So it's just me and Lydia here. Lydia is happily playing outside at the moment. Since Ella is outside, she tends to play outside really well, which is really nice. So I was just going to share something that God has been teaching me this week, and it's one of those things that's kind of personal, and I don't know if we'll have any meaning to anybody else, but um, I'm going to share it in case it does. So... In the beginning of the year, I made a video um, lesson from dogs for kids. I would really like to make videos or to make lessons for children about what you can learn from animals. That's kind of a desire that I have. So I did my first one and I was planning to do more of those this year. But then I got the job teaching the Bible at school and so that's what I was busy with. So I didn't really have time to go studying lessons from animals as well. So then I thought, well, if I do do videos for kids, I'll do ones on the Bible lessons that I've already been teaching because I kind of already have ideas for that and it's already fresh in my mind. So <clears throat> anyway, I did the first one about creation and then the next week I was thinking about doing it again, but I wasn't really sure because um, I was very busy at school and I didn't really have a lot of time to be making videos like that. And so I prayed about it, but I told God I don't really have time to do it. So this was like a week later. Well, that evening, Johan went out for the whole evening. He went to the Little Haven to, um, he prepares, he preaches sermons sometimes, so he has to go and have quiet time to study and prepare for that. 
and so he was going to be out for the whole evening which would mean I would have the evening to myself once the kids were in bed um, and before he left he sat all the children down and read them a story which he hasn't been doing lately usually I read a bedtime story so that gave me an extra 5-10 minutes so while he did that I got the jobs done and then Hannah she offered to read Lydia a bedtime story and usually I do that as well so I told God I didn't have time to make it and yeah anyway I ended up having kind of a whole evening to make it so I did it but then the week after um, we got COVID and the kids were everybody was at home and so I didn't end up making one and then the next week I was had COVID myself and so I didn't do it but anyway I kept thinking out should I make should I go and do the next story or not but because we were sick and um and just because yeah I just really wasn't sure whether to do it or not whether to keep going with it um, so anyway, I was praying about it, and it's, sometimes you just don't know whether you're supposed to do something or not. And yeah, so the question I had is, how am I supposed to know whether God wants me to do it or not? Because that really is the only the only question, does God want me to do it? So anyway, I was praying about it, and God didn't really give me any clear answer. But um, that evening and the day that I was praying about it, I got it done. I made it. I made a video of the next story. Um, but anyway, that um, that evening when I went to read the Daily Light, I saw the reading for the day before, for the evening before, and the verse said, His word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. And the whole reading was about um, preaching the gospel, telling what great things the Lord has done for us, and like Peter and John when they said we cannot but speak the things that we have seen and heard and then it has the verse the love of Christ compels us and for me it just kind of answered my question a bit like how do you know sometimes whether you're supposed to do something or not when God doesn't really give you any clear direction and you just don't really know um, and so to me it answered the question it was if you can't if you can't just forget about it if you have an idea of something to do and you can't just forget about it, then that can be a sign that God does want you to do it. So I'd had this idea and I couldn't just forget about it. It just kept coming back to me all the time. And even though God didn't really give me clear direction about it, I couldn't just forget about it. And it was the same when I first was thinking about doing vlogs or doing that kind of video. I would forget about it for a while and then the idea would keep coming back to me. So I'd pray about it and then forget about it for a while and the idea would just keep coming back and keep coming back. And so, yeah, this verse says about his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back and I could not. So, if you can't forget about an idea and you've prayed about it and you're willing to do whatever God wants you to do, even if you don't even want to do it, if you just can't forget about it, then that can mean that God does want you to do it. Um, and Joni Erickson wrote a devotional about that very verse, which is from Jeremiah. And <clears throat> this is like the last part of the devotional. <clears throat> she said, if you sense that burning, that nudging and urging to keep sharing God's word, don't let it be quenched by your discouragement and fears. Stir the fire, fan the flames. As Paul wrote to his friends, do not put out the Spirit's fire. Even if those flames within you have dwindled to a single lonely coal, just a faint glimmer, you still have the makings of a fire. Don't let anybody throw water on it. And it also reminds me of one time... Oh, a long time ago, I had an idea of an object lesson for kids that I was going to make, which was actually very similar to the Adam and Eve one that I just did, but not trying to hide your sin, trying to cover it up. But anyway, so I had the idea to do it, but I was very tired. I think I'd made like two videos just the day before, and I was kind of sick of making videos and just wanted a break from making them. But I had this idea of one, so anyway, I was praying about it, and I was feeling very just tired and exhausted, so I think it was in the evening. I went and hopped into my bed and my dad had sent me a sermon called, Are You Tired? And since I was feeling tired, I thought I would lay down, have a rest, and I would listen to the sermon. And I just start listening to the sermon and the preacher in the sermon starts talking about the exact thing that I've been thinking about to put on my video for children, about covering and hiding your sin. And so to me, I, I then the next day I made that video and it's like, well, I could not not do it because I tried to forget about it. I just wanted to have a rest and then the very sermon I started listening to had the exact same thing in it and I knew that it was um, yeah I knew I'd be disobeying if I didn't do it 
so if you can't not do something then that can be a good sign that it is from God if you can't just forget about it and of course we can choose to disobey but um, yeah if we can't forget about it that can mean that we are supposed to do it and another thought which I wrote down in my journal which was also from Johnny Erickson um, and it's about obedience so I'm just going to read this a little bit out. It starts off with, When Alexander the Great was asked how he conquered the world, he replied, I acted time after time without delay. Charles Spurgeon said, We often make a mistake when we dilly-dally around when God asks us to do what is a known Christian impression. Why do we waste God's time and our time when what is our Christian duty to do, we ought to do? Are we willing, like Abraham, to exchange the known present for the unknown future? Are we willing to... Face the risks of obeying God. Do we respond immediately? Maybe we would if we understood that obedience means blessing. God always keeps his word, and when we live in obedience to that word, our lives will be blessed. Um, then she goes on to say that that doesn't mean there will be no cost or no pain, but she's saying that obedience brings blessings. That kind of goes along with what I was saying before if God puts in our heart to do something then we do need to obey. You had fun outside? Yeah. You're finished now? Yeah. What should we do now? Um, I'm going to break it out and I'm going to do it out. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so bye-bye. Bye-bye. And another idea that I had for Lydia was to make, um, things like this so she can match up the letters and it helps her remember and to spell the word as well they fun Ed? oh <laughs> she's got an N instead of a C <laughs> you find an R? Oh. where's the R? here's one You know what that word is? Da. Car, yay. You. You. Sun. Sun, yay. Well yeah. done. Another fun way to practice reading words is to get jingle blocks and write the words on. So I've written the ones on that Lydia's been learning and then you can well either build towers or build jinga and they have to read out the words. Okay, can you read that one? Um, happy. Very good. Is Lydia happy too? Yeah. <laughs> Is Ella? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> what about? What does that say? Mama? Let me pen it out. What does it say? Ella's happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. I love to see Lydia trying to skip. She enjoys it so much and she doesn't really know how to do it. Go! Oh, wow! Yes, go again? Okay. Okay, go! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Find as much joy in simple things. <laughs> Our favourite way to use up mashed potato is to make potato fritters. So tonight Johan is out for dinner with Joseph, celebrating his birthday because Joseph was sick when he had COVID. I mean he was sick on his birthday. 
So these um, you mix equal parts of flour with the potato. So I had two cups of mashed potato so I put two cups of flour with it and I put in some salami and a little bit of cheese and some flavorings and then roll them up into balls and cook them and they're really nice. Do you like them Hannah? Yes. Do you like potato fritters Esther? Yes. Are they yummy? Mm-hmm.